Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Secretary of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, Kwesi Devines, addresses the media. This afternoon I'll be speaking to you, members of the media, about um, some of the projects that my division has been undertaking and some of the projects that we are about to undertake um, that are very critical and germane to the people of Tobago. Um, first of all, I know that there's some curiosity that some people have about what are these wires running across the highway in some cases. And I remember the last time I faced the media, I would have spoken about a traffic study. Um, so I'm here actually with uh, my senior technocrat, Ms. Nadia Frank John, and we'll be updating you on the traffic study 2018. And I really want to put it in context because in the last five years, approximately 6,000 vehicles have been registered in Tobago. New vehicles have been registered in Tobago. And of course, this does not account for vehicles registered in Trinidad, and vehicles that are transferred, and vehicles that were already on the road. So we're th talking about 6,000 new vehicles in the last five years. It means, of course, that there is a lot more De there are a lot more demands on our road infrastructure. Of course, we see the congestion sometimes, particularly in Tobago, where most persons work or are supposed to get to work by 8 a.m. We see the, the traffic congestion. And uh, aside from building new roads, which is one thing that we are looking towards and we have started doing, we have to take a very scientific and strategic approach to traffic management and as such we commissioned a traffic study the 2018 traffic study and of course nadia will speak to you um, about it in further detail as it really looks towards um, the type of congestion that we face the amount of persons who utilize the roadway the peak periods and so on and the length of queues so nadia will be will speak in more detail to that and what Nadia will also speak in more detail to again with increased numbers in vehicles um, and of course a lot of our business our business center in Scarborough and Crown Point what we are seeing now is a higher demand for parking as well and that is a challenge that we have to deal with and as such we would have also commissioned a parking study um, for Tobago particularly Scarborough area and we're looking at the parking needs in Tobago and more specifically wh where we can get more parking, what areas you can get more parking. And, you know, we always speak about development and moving Tobago forward. And I remember one time going to Canada and downtown Toronto. Some friends of mine came to visit me in downtown Toronto, but he didn't drive. And I wondered why. They said, crazy, we can't afford parking in downtown Toronto. Um, of course, parking here is free of charge and it's something that we have to look at. Do we continue to maintain free parking all through Scarborough or should there be metered or paid parking in, in different parts of Scarborough? Because, of course, we have to be strategic about the limited amount of parking spaces that we do have. And we have to be mindful that, yes, we can add to the infrastructure but of course that comes at a cost and there's a time factor involved so the parking study nadia will speak to it in more details the 2018 traffic study was commissioned in december of 2018 and it runs until the end of february of 2019 and so we use a three month period to gather um really some data that will help inform the way we move forward um as a division in terms of what we're doing with with traffic in scarborough um where we started is there is a base model that was um created and what that base model essentially is is a map of a live map of what is happening on the ground at our intersections um throughout downtown scarborough and it allows us to put in information like the average um vehicle counts on the ground uh it allows us to count the turn movements 
types of vehicles, how many vehicles essentially are using our roadways in the city center um, daily, and to assess what is really needed to help to maximize our roadway capacity. Because as Secretary Devine said, with increased car volumes on the roadway and um, we have the same amount of, of square footage of road to drive on, what, what do we do? And we have to increase the capacity and the efficiency in which we use the capacity of the roadways. And so what we're examining now is motorist delays. How long are you delayed? Are those acceptable delays? Um, the queue lengths and what causes our queue lengths? Um, the number of stops vehicles make, persons make along the roadway. And to really aggregate that number um, in terms of how we're going to reduce um, quote-unquote congestion in the downtown Scarborough area. So the 2018 traffic study will inform decisions um, of the division in terms of how we go forward in managing the expectations of the public when they journey to work and to, to improve your average times of getting from place to place um, without any sort of discomfort. Um, we did the traffic study already in 2015, so it is um, something that the division is doing to continuously gather data and not really eyeball what is happening on the ground, but to really make um, informed decisions as it comes to traffic management in Tobago. And the traffic study in 2018 will inform a lot of what we do going forward. The parking study is a new thing for us because we have realized that uh, Scarborough and the Crown Point area has a lot of parking issues on the roadways. Persons trying to find places to park, they park in places that are designated no parking spaces. And oftentimes we get wrecked because um, we're parking where we're not supposed to be parking. And so the parking studies are really to inform what we do going forward. Um, where do we put parking spaces? How many of those parking spaces should be paid parking? Should we do park and ride? Um, things like that are being explored. Um, are our parking spots really underutilized and people are just parking on the roadway because it's closer to where they are going? We really need to assess what is happening on the ground and to, to make the experience in Scarborough a little better um, for persons. That may mean that you may now have more parking facility, but you have to pay for it. It could mean a lot of things, um, but we're depending on the studies to do get that information for us. So now, as we speak, there are persons on the ground gathering um, data. We have developed an app and persons are on the ground using that app to gather information. They are gathering um, how long vehicles are parked in one spot. Um, how, does this vehicle come back to this spot during the daytime? And we're really monitoring what is happening on the ground. Um, so you may see persons marked in the company that is doing the study um, for us is Carry Trans Limited. And you may see they have identifying badges and they may do on the ground surveys with persons that are parked as well um, to gather the information that we need. So the Scarborough and the Crown, Crown, Crown Point area, um, we are collecting data this week for parking. The information for the traffic study all the base data that we need on the ground has already been collected as of last week and so we are really now um the contractor is really now hammering down on assessing that data in terms of what is going on to make decisions and recommendations to the um, division as it relates to that both studies will be completed by the last day of february 28th and um we will after that, in the first week of um, March, um, release the information that we've, we've gotten from the studies to the public, to the media, so that you can know what is happening um, and where we are planning to go forward in the future with these studies. And some related news, and of course, very welcome news for the people of Tobago. The resurfacing of the Claude Noel Highway, or I should say the rehabilitation of the Claude Noel Highway, will commence in within the coming week, the coming two weeks, sorry, I should say. The, our project manager, MTS, was able to complete the tender process, and the 
award of contract has gone to Siram Brothers Limited and the project cost VAT exclusive. We were able to negotiate it downwards to just about $30 million VAT exclusive. And this, of course, is from the Rockley Vale lights to the Orange Hill lights. And it must be noted that this is really the most um, thorough work that has been done on the highway since its original construction. So it would mean that we will be milling down the, both the wearing course and the base course and getting down to the foundation of the highway, um, repairing the foundation where there are spots of failure, notable spots of failure. Um, we are looking to ensure that we replace, of course, our barricades, the road marking and so on. So it's a very comprehensive rehabilitation that we are doing for that two kilometer stretch of highway. Um, it is noteworthy as well that um, the cost of bitumen, some of the raw materials have gone up as well. So we've had to factor all of that into this project. So we can get some relief. The reality is that there will now be, some, of course, some inconvenience as this project is estimated to last between four to four and a half months. But we are hoping to get the contractor down in terms of time and be working with the contractor and, of course, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service because it means, in the first instance, because the highway is the main artery, um, we won't want to block um, traffic at all or block it off completely. So we will be doing paving in the night or works in the night time primarily. However, if you want to get... Um, faster delivery will mean some works being done in the daytime and that's where more inconvenience will come into play um, what I can say and I know Nadia can speak to it if needs be is that we do have we have been working on alternative routes to ensure that persons where there will be um, inconvenience and there will be an impact in your regular um, route to, or to work or school, as the case may be. Um, we do have alternative routes. We've been working to ensure that they are, are more easily motorable and persons will be able to use these alternative routes. What I will ask is the patience and the due care of our drivers on the road, on the roadways. And of course, persons, if it is, you have to leave 15 or 20 minutes earlier in the morning time to ensure that you get to work or school on time. But this is very necessary work to be done. And the more work that is done in the night time is the higher the cost of the project. And as we try to drive down costs and get value for money and of course, speed up on time, if we do more work in a day, there will be some inconvenience. So we can look forward to, to that. Um, again, so Siram Brothers Limited, they have been awarded with the contract and they'll be mobilized within the coming two weeks. So persons can look forward to that work being done. Listen out to the media houses and so on, the divisions, Facebook monitor the division, social media, because we will be putting out notifications as the case might be as we look to get the work started on um, the highway. Um, just to note that we've been also doing other road resurfacing work throughout Tobago. And we have recently completed the Glamorgan to Bell Garden stretch. Um, we are currently working at Argyle. We would have, we are then moving to the Kings Bay area along the Wynwood Road. So again, we are looking at really getting a lot of work done on the Wynwood Road. We've done a lot of work in Mount St. George in the Cart Road area, actually. It was over $3 million worth of paving done in that area. And we've also done some work in Susu Lands. So all of this is planned work, part of our road resurfacing program. And I want persons to take note that this is not election paving, but this is part of our regular program. And we are rolling it out and investing a lot of funds in infrastructural work on the island in terms of our road network and um, I want persons to be patient, to exercise more patience with us and also do care on the roadways when we're doing the work. Um, some persons now of course are happy for smoother roads so the speeds tend to pick up. I just want to advise persons to please stay within the limits, the speed limits and exercise due care on the roadway. All right. In terms of the Thompson River Bridge, as you would recall, we would have completed the Lambo River Bridge recently, and we are now moving towards the Thompson River Bridge. This is the 
one of the three bridges that have been earmarked for the Milford Road um, Bridge Rehabilitation Program and the Thompson River Bridge is that um, the next bridge along the on the plan. It's currently a one-lane bridge, and we are looking to expand it, of course, to two lanes, uh, reinforced and have it reinforced so that it could support up to 10-wheeler trucks. And right now, we have a limit on that um, roadway. We don't want any vehicles over five tons on, on that particular bridge. Um, NITCO actually would have sent out the letter of award today, so we can expect to see um, work starting within or by the end of February on that. In the meantime, the Division of Infrastructure is working on the bypass, which, of course, if persons pass, they will be on the northern side of the bridge. And we are looking to, of course, put in abutments on both sides and install a Bailey Bridge so that, that, so that the Milford Road is not cut off at that point. Um, we want to maintain the flow of vehicular traffic, the, through traffic, of course, maintaining the old Milford Road as an alternative to the Claude Noel Highway. So we look forward to that bridge being constructed. We expect the construction time to be 15 months, especially if we get the construction started, let's say, at the beginning of March. So we expect 14 to 15 months for us to complete that particular project. Additionally, as we continue to ramp up our works, um, you will recall that the Study Park Enterprise Limited, um, which is a wholly owned THA company, that we would have um, handed over the operations of the quarry to at the end of 2017, November 2017. Um, they have completed the rehabilitation works on the Barbados Bay jetty. And I'm pleased to report that on Saturday, last Saturday, the 26th, the first barge did, um, did land at the Barbados Bay jetty. That's the first barge in over 15 years would have landed at the Barbados Bay jetty. As part of an exploratory exercise, the berthing and commissioning was um, considered successful. And as a result, we were able to ship over 2,200 metric tons of aggregate from Tobago, directly from Barbados Bay. And that resulted in over $300,000 in revenue. So you can imagine the potential that we have now, that we no longer have to have these trucks um, going from the quarry down to the port. And we now can ship up to well, over 2,000 tons of aggregate at a time using these barges. And we do have inches from Guyana, Grenada, and so on for aggregate from Tobago. And of course, a lot of work in Trinidad. Our armored rock from the quarries in high demand. Um, there's a humongous um, uh, coastal zone protection a project going on in Cap de Ville right now in Trinidad, and they would really love to have our armored rock out of Tobago. And as a result, we are pleased that we now have the Barbados Bay jetty functional so that we can ship aggregates and our material directly from the Barbados Bay jetty to Trinidad and beyond. We also have some work going on on the along the Windward Road, as I would have indicated previously, we are looking to really upgrade the Windward Road, and we would have seen the work done at John Dial already, and we're taking that work all the way up to Charlotteville in terms of the upgrade of the Windward Road. Uh, we're currently undertaking an exercise where we're installing a large retaining wall in Mount St. George near Georgia Boys. Uh, of course, we are hoping to get this project completed in a 45-day period. This is a similar team to the one that worked at Pembroke, and we're using similar methods in terms of our renewed project planning approach and project management approach so that these works will be done without too much delay um, anticipated. The wall is um, estimated to be 30 meters with varying heights, with um, slipper drains at the front. So we're looking forward to that wall being completing in quick time as we look forward to continuing our work on the Windward Road as we look to open up the east of Tobago. Um, that being said, um, at the end of November last year, 
the executive council would have approved um, a note, an executive council note for the division to engage UDICOT to do work or remedial work on the on Turpin Ben in Charlottesville. Of course, you know Turpin Ben, that double Ben, that is the double hairpin Ben, that has been a sore point for us in Tobago and of course in Charlottesville for many years. Um, we are attacking it in two phases. The first phase, we are doing all studies necessary, which will include geotechnical studies and, and designs and so on. And then the second phase will be the construction phase. I remember before I started, or when I just started off in, in this office, someone warned me about persons who come to you and say just. And very often persons say just go and build a retaining wall there in um, Turpin Bend and fix that carry the road um, street. And I don't know that we could just do that. And I'm very mindful and as such, we're taking this approach to do the necessary studies, geotechnical surveys and so on, so that we can get an appropriate um, design that we could then implement following that. So of course, this will be over a two year period so that we allow for these studies to be done. And UDICOT has been engaged um, on that. I would have spoken to a representative from um, PTSC yes, just yesterday and we would have agreed especially for the buses that um, more training be done for the drivers of the buses and that they standardize the operations in the interim at the Turpin Bend so that we avoid instances where buses um, get run into unfortunate um, circumstances on the Turpin Bend. Finally, I just want to speak to the Roxford Administrative Complex, which is 98% complete at present. And, uh, of course, we will recall that the SUD was turned in September 2017 for this project, and the project cost at the time was estimated at $46 million. We are currently well within the budgeted sum, and we are making some adjustments to ensure that the building is of the highest standard for the people in the East and Roxborough, of course. Um, we are ensuring that the building can stand up to the very corrosive environment. So we're using a, a thermochromex finish. That is um, the, build, the cladding for the building and a limestone plaster so that again, the building would not need to be repainted in, um, in a short time and it'll be UV resistant. We're also ensuring that the necessary works are done to prevent and preserve corrosion to the metal elements and so on. Um, the, I'm also pleased that so far we were able to record working on this project. It was a Tobago contractor in Towers Consortium Consultancy Limited. And that Tobago contractor utilized 80% of labor from the area. So we see where these types of development, major development on the island, are not only going to benefit us in the short, in the long term with the services that will now be available in the east, but also in the short to medium term where persons are able to be employed, um, gainfully employed. Of course, you're looking for business development units, the EBC, Inland Revenue, Registrar General's Office, Office, the Rural Development Unit under the Office of the Chief Secretary, the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, TT Post, Licensing, Public Health, Social Welfare, and the Chief Secretary would also have an office in the building. So those are the main points that we have for now. Um, again, Nadia will be free to speak about the traffic plan for when we begin the road resurfacing, um, the, sorry, the rehabilitation of the highway. So once we start the rehabilitation of the Claude Noel Highway, um, what will happen is that we'll not only utilize the, the police to assist with directing traffic, but we will have the alternate routes that um, Secretary Devine spoke of. We will have some media work done where we, we share these maps that are being created to show persons coming from, for example, if we're working um, between Rockley Vale and uh, uh, Wilson Road um, in that intersection to show persons coming from the north side road where you can have alternatives to get to either 
Cudler Hall or to the Wilson Road side where you can go. So we're anticipating where persons coming from a particular area where the destination should be and providing ahead of time uh, maps and information on how you will get there. Now we won't put all the maps for each intersection out at one time because the project will be done kind of phased from intersection to intersection so that um, we have utilization of most of the roadway while the project is going on. And so as we move from intersection to intersection, that information would be given as to how you circulate and where, where you're going. And for persons that don't have access to that information ahead of time, the police officers will be on site to direct you where you need to go. So you may come at an intersection and you can't go anywhere. We have to turn you around. The, police officers will direct you that way. But ahead of time, the division will provide um, through the media these maps and detailed information on alternative routes. We know a lot of Tobagonians know how to get through back roads and that kind of thing. And so for those that don't know how to get those ways, we'll highlight on maps um, where you can try to use landmarkers that people are familiar with and identify where you can go and how you can get there. But it's also important to anticipate the delays. And in anticipating the delays, it may mean that you may have to leave, leave a little earlier to get to work or it may mean that you may have to leave a little later um, just based on what is going on at the time and throughout the four month period we will keep the public up to date on, on what is happening the the entire intersection will not be shut down the entire phase of work um, the work area will not be shut down and the the public will be safe even though we're using large equipment on the roadway and so to ensure your safety and the safety of our staff um, we have to keep you away from certain areas at certain times but again we will have uh, maps that are already developed and are ready to, to be disseminated we know our communications person will get the information out to you and we'd be in the media again explaining where you need to go how you need to get there, what times of days would be more saturated with work and you should deviate from getting in certain areas and would keep the public um, abreast of what is happening. Concerning the the bridge, um, why would the bridge take 14 to 15 months? Would it be an issue of um, f funding throughout the fiscal year or is it a matter of... Um, engineering specifics it's 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 specific the scope of works so does cover that period of time um mm -hmm. so it's not that we can just go and put down a bridge um actually there's a lot of piling work it's more extensive piling work to be done than the lambo river bridge um if you're familiar with the area if you really want to go there mangrove yeah, there's mangrove in the area and so on. It's softer land. So when the geotechnical studies were done, you would, you would have realized the bearing capacity is not as good as the Lambo River bridge area. So we have to do more piling work. Um, so it requires a bit more engineering. We still are using um, the astro beams so that we are doing some prefab as well. So we are looking to the best engineering practices. So it's just a matter of the engineering and the scope of works will cover that, that span of time. Concerning the Barbados Bay jetty, um, the, is the jetty now that it's rehabilitated, can it facilitate multiple dockings or is it one at a time? No, at, at, at this time it's, it's one at a time. Um, I would not necessarily advise just yet um, to have multiple dockings in any case. Um, but it is, it is one at a time, and the way it's done, um, we don't necessarily have a, a large rush, per se, but it's scheduled. So they're able to bring in barges, load them up, and, and take them out. So, of course, it depends as well on the tide. So it's um, the guys there are very knowledgeable and know what they're doing. Um, so they will be waiting, doing the, the loading up one barge that time. Okay. You said that um, one of the shipments was valued at $300,000? The shipment that left, yeah. Okay. Um, so, in terms of economics, what does this this rehabilitation of the jetty mean for Tobago, for the THA, in terms of um, annual revenues? Well, it, it means, quite frankly, that we'll be able to achieve greater projections or, or greater sales, because we now have direct a direct link to the market in Trinidad. Um, previously, any aggregate coming out of Tobago had to be shipped using the inter-island ferries. 
the cargo vessel, and it would have had to be done with trucks. So there would have been some measure of double handling, which is an increased cost as well. So now we are able, with the increase in infrastructure work in Trinidad, um, the anticipation of increased work in Guyana, we are able to ship directly out of Tobago. Um, I know people have been speaking for a long time about a cargo um, jetty or cargo port in Tobago. Um, this is the early, what we call the early makings of a cargo jetty, basically. So we're now able to export a lot more aggregate. So it really comes down to our ability now to crush and, and um, produce aggregate enough to meet the demand. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing for the week ending February 2nd, 2019.